In this example, I want to demonstrate how to make a mold for one of the parts of this flashlight. So we're going to make a mold for this handle. Let's go to the, the handle itself. I will finish the placement of the part and I want to check the orientation of the part. Now I could have done that as I was placing the part, but let's go to adjust orientation. In this case, I see that my opening direction isn't in the direction that I intended. And so I'll select a planar face on this side of the part and I want to then flip that opening direction so I can rotate around X Y or Z I can select geometry to uh, set my opening direction now we may need to pay attention to draft angle and we can change the settings for that we just go ahead and select for that orientation then I'll select material and for this problem I don't really care at this point what the material is but if we want to see details about the material uh, we can select here for the details we can get a report on the material there are thousands of materials built into Inventor from many different manufacturers and then I'm going to go to the core cavity uh, environment but notice we can if we want to do malt parts we can pattern these parts we can put in runners do gate locations cooling channels mold process settings fill analysis mold shrinkage all of that stuff let's go to the core cavity though again we could adjust that orientation if we wanted to we can indicate gate locations and I'm just gonna put in a gate location just for illustration purposes it may not be the best location but if I want it let's say halfway along this line I'm going to click on that line and then for the position to put it halfway I'll do 0.5 that moves it to the center of that line now we could also tell inventor to suggest where the best location would be to put the gates and how many gates that we want but I'll just go ahead and accept this one location and then I'm going to go to my part process settings and I can put in the temperatures for the mold the pressure and I can also again have inventor make a suggestion of the best temperatures and pressure we'll come back later and do a part fill analysis but for now I want to define the workpiece setting actually we can do this why the part fill analysis is in progress and also we can calculate part shrinkage let's go ahead and do this part fill analysis and I'll go ahead and start that and it tells us that I must set the, the process settings first which I thought I had done so let's say okay to that and then I'll do my part fill analysis and I can go on and do other work why that's occurring in the background and so I'll define my workpiece setting so this is the block of material that I'm going to cut this mold out of and so I can change the size of that block of material if I want this to be 100 millimeters in the x direction in the y direction if I want to increase that uh, for the z height if I, I would like to increase that so you can put your dimension for your block of material that you're going to cut the mold out of if you want to lock those dimensions you can lock those you can either do a rectangular or a cylindrical block of material and if I want to put a chamfer or a fillet in one corner or the other uh, to key the part particularly when you have symmetrical parts you may only want it to go into the mold in one way and so now I've defined my workpiece setting I'll then do create patching surfaces to close any holes and I can have inventor attempt to do that automatically so I'll do auto detect and so it found a hole here that it locates and I can move that to the upper or lower location on that hole and it found the hole here and I'm going to go ahead and accept those locations but notice you can move those up or down and if you could also manually create patches I'll then create runoff surfaces and I'll attempt to automatically create the runoff surface for this but on this particular part it doesn't go all the way around and find all of my runoff surface and so I'm going to cancel that and I'll go in and do it manually so why I was trying to solve for the runoff surfaces, my mold analysis or part fill analysis was running in the background and I get a report about the various parameters including cycle time, clamp forces and so forth. And then I get the general information about the materials and I'm going to go over here to the results tab and I'll expand this. And so I just arbitrarily selected a gate location back here. If we double click on fill time, we can get a indication of the fill time and if we want to animate this result we can load the animation tool and see how this plastic cavity would be filled I can also uh, animate the results of the flow and that was in this case it's going to be the same as our fill I can select a confidence of fill I can do a quality prediction and so here's some areas in here that may or may not be an issue I can examine for air traps and for weld lines 
So my initial attempt of automatically creating the runoff surfaces didn't come out with good results. So I'm going to delete those uh, runoff surfaces and I'll go in and manually create my runoff surfaces. So I'll uh, do create runoff surface and I may want to turn off this automatic edge chain, uh, but I'll leave it on for a few minutes and then if I decide it gets in the way, I'll turn it off. So I'm going to select this edge right here and I actually want that to come out looking at the coordinate system on the X negative direction. And so I'll select that to X negative and then I'll select this curve and so that looks fine like that. I'll select this curve and that looks fine. I'm going to avoid this area right in here until last. That's where we had trouble with and then I'll uh, select this curve and I'll select this curve. Now I see that it's going all the way back around this edge when it highlights it. I don't want to go around this edge because I've put it at this uh, fillet and so I'm going to turn off automatic edge chain and I'll select this edge and I'll select that edge but I need for this edge to go out in the X direction. So I'll change that to the X direction and then I'll select this one and I need that one to go in the X direction. I'll select this one. I need that to go in the X direction and I'll come up here. I'll select this one and this one. I'll come around here and select this edge and if I turn chain selection back on it would have been fewer click and then I'll select this edge. This edge. Let's turn this chain selection back on and I'll select this edge. I'll select this edge and now that one I want to go in the X negative negative direction. So I'll select X negative and I'll select this one. I want that to go in X negative so it's going along and I don't want to go all the way around this curve so I'm going to turn off automatic edge chain again. Now if we select an edge that we don't want we can always right click and delete an edge. We leave that edge chain on. So I'll select this one and I'll select this one. Now this one would this one right back in here would come underneath here which causes us a problem because we can't come underneath here. We can't go underneath all of these runoff surfaces. So I'll go ahead and select OK to create the runoff surfaces that we have thus far. And then for that complicated area, I'm going to create a planar path. And I'll select the edge of this runoff surface. And then I'll select this edge of the part. And there's a, this edge of the part, this edge of the part. And then I need to get this edge. And it comes across there and closes up. Say OK to that. And now I have the runoff surfaces that I need to generate the corn cavity and I'll diagnose and so if I separate this then here is the cavity side of the mold here is the core side of the mold and if I make any changes to the part this is all associatively updated. I'll select OK. Inside that area is where the plastic will be injected. I'll then go to the mold layout setting. Now I have an eye in a circle here so I drill down and find out what that issue is but for this demonstration purposes I'm going to ignore that issue and I'll finish the core cavity and then I'll go to to the mold assembly tab and I'll select a mold base. So this red box right here that is the size of our block of steel for our mold looking at it from the end and then this red box is looking at it from this view. You could change the dimensions of the mold base if you desire. I'm going to leave it at the default settings for this block and then for the placement I'm going to select one of these edges and I'm going to select an edge that most of these planes are the same level. So I'll select, I'll select that edge, select OK. And so there we see our mold base. We can start to add ejectors, sliders, lifters, screws, locating rings, cooling components, lock sets. Let's go ahead and add a few ejector pins. So I'm going to select ejector pins and I have different manufacturers, different sizes of uh, ejector pins that I can use and then I can place the ejectors. One like say right here. Now the smaller circle that's the diameter of lowercase d1 here and then I have the length and we'll come back and look at this in a minute but if we want to change that diameter it's going to have standard diameters that you could purchase off the shelf for these pins. So I'll put another pin over here. Now when you place the pins it's going to give us a X and Y location of those pins. We can move those pins uh, later on. Right now I'm just placing them by eye. Okay so you get the idea for placing the pins and, and you can move those. Now for the pins I need to decide on a length and so 250 millimeter pins would be longer than what I need. If I do 160 though I see that those aren't long enough and so I'll put in a 200 millimeter pin so it's longer than the part but Inventor is going to cut off these pins so you purchase these off the shelf and then cut them to the lengths that you need. And the pins can also match if you have a curved face the pins can will match the curvature of the face as well. I'll go ahead and say okay to that. Here are a couple of the pins. Inventor drilled holes through all the various plates. Put appropriate clearance in. Uh, you can specify the clearance. 
Then I'm going to do a, a lock set. All of these mold components are placed in a similar way. And so I'm going to, I'll select a slide lock. And then for my placement location, I'm going to select this face. And then I can give it a reference as well. Tell it, you know, how far along to offset that at zero. And then I'm going to create a symmetrical lock on the other side. So the mold is cut with this lock in place. And just continue on adding the other portions of your mold. 